my blender clip for the week. So we're doing civilization games. I didn't really feel like doing a 4x game. I don't usually like them. They tend to have dice combat um, and that's boring to me. I could have done Kemet, I suppose. And I also thought about doing Prosperity, but I ended up with Innovation and Nippon, getting to speak a little bit about Nippon's kind of very unique theme. Uh, such a weird time in Japan and it's so cool like how quickly everything happened there. Um, I didn't get to use the word zaibatsu. I thought about it, but I didn't. And then innovation to me is the ultimate sub game. It's all of the inventions, and I didn't love Legacy Gears of Time. I thought it was cool, but the actual upkeep, fiddly, knowing what's been done was just not, in my mind, well executed. I almost wanted, I don't know if you guys know Legacy Gears of Time, uh, you go and invent things, and if you invented, if one is invented, this one will lead to that one, so you have kind of prerequisites on some of the inventions, but then if someone else jumps farther back in time, they can pre-invent the thing you invented and kind of take credit for it away from you. Um, it, it was a cool idea. It was actually a pretty fun game, but I didn't, I didn't like just having to track everything on the board and just counting cards over and over and over and checking and checking and checking, because there were these giant cards that you needed to know a lot of the information on, so it just wasn't practical in, in my game group. Um, I would love a more physical way of tracking prerequisites. That would be much easier in my mind, like a little Trivial Pursuit piece where you plug in all the little chips as you invent things that the other things require. Um, but that's my side. I, I did like Legacy Gears of Time, just not that much. Uh, so innovation to me is the ultimate, though. Uh, very swingy, very broken, but I know that in my mind, having every card be so strong and so broken is good. And it's one of the few games that pulls this off where you know everything is way too strong. So if anyone's doing well, you got to shut them down. So the whole game is about batting down the leader instead of trying to win yourself. You have to try to win, but you also have to watch out for whomever, what everyone else is doing, which I like, um, that kind of interactions. Um, so, if you see the Innovation 3rd Edition, it's in stores, like, this week. It's 20 bucks. It is gorgeous. They did a really good job rebalancing a couple of the cards and um, making it way easier to see information on the board as it is presented. So, do it, do it, do it. I gotta rebuy it because I crushed mine in the backseat of my car. It fell down below the seat and then the seat went on top of it, so it was all kind of crushed. But that's okay. 20 bucks is not so bad. Um, that's all for me for now, and I hope to have some more stuff out soon. Bye! Hey everyone, it's MaggieBot, and today we're talking about civilization games. I hope others are regaling you with really awesome, giant, war, sprawling 4X games. But for me, my favorite type of civilization game lies in true stories and inventiveness and sort of the other side of the culture of Civ. So the first one I would always recommend if anyone needed a Civ game is Innovation. Innovation takes you from prehistory all the way through the modern age, inventing things as you go, the most telling thing I can say about whether or not someone would like innovation is there's not one broken strategy, there are only broken strategies, so it's really about mitigating who you think is in the lead, crushing their really strong cards, getting out one of your own and trying to keep, keep, keep it. Uh, if you see like coal or gunpowder hit the table, you have to know that those are big flashy cards and you gotta shut them down. So it's got a little diplomacy in it. Um, it was one of the first games I played. It was played on the same day I first played Dominant Species and I have been their fan ever since. There's a brand new third edition with new graphic design and some cards that changed a little bit. Absolutely gorgeous. I wish I had my copy, but I crushed it on accident. Luckily, it's only 20 bucks to replace. It is shipping to stores right now. The other one I wanted to talk about is Nippon again. <laughs> Nippon focuses on one particular time in Japan's culture where they literally just kind of looked around, said that they felt a little bit too rural or behind the West. They sent out emissaries to bring back technicians and scientists and scholars, and they literally just went through a rapid change. So each player is playing um, a business trying to have the biggest network in the new culture of Japan. Um, 
it's a really cool thought and you can see that still in Japan looking forward being inventive always chasing new tech and that's what they do still to this day. Um, I love Nippon, it's an action selection game. You put out some meeples, as you pluck them off the board, you take the action associated with them. The more colors you choose, the more income you're gonna have to pay. So at any time, you can kind of sweep off all the meeples you've collected that round and you have to pay your people and you, you don't get an action that round. Um, it also has a really cool mechanism where each time you kind of sweep off your meeples and you collect them, you get a bonus for points at the end of the game, and you have to assign it to one of eight or ten choices. Really difficult, very cool choices, it really flavors the game, and it's never boring. One other thing I really love about Nippon is the pacing of the game. You have just enough time in between turns to really determine what you'd like to do, and if someone spites you out of one meeple, it's not the end of the world to take a different color, which is really nice. It's easy to be a little bit mean in the game, but not so mean that it'll make people feel bad. That's all for me for now, and I will see y'all next time.